Hold on, hold on, let me take another, another selfie here. What takes a fraction of a second today would have astounded its 19th century inventor with a camera that would require an entire day to set up to produce a very blurry image. And I could still remember when it was just too expensive to take as many photos as I wanted because of the film that was needed. Film? It was all a rather expensive hobby back then. And now, Hello my dear friends of photography, I'm Brett and a warm welcome to another episode of It's History. Today I will discuss how it is that we came to capture everything with the photograph. The history of photography is a strange one considering that its many individual parts and basic features have been known for a very long time. For example, it was known since ancient times that concentrated light could project images. Also lenses made from crystal were generally known way back when. And since the 17th century, it was known that light could be copied onto material with certain chemical compounds. But it took 200 years for all of this knowledge to come together. Right now, you could build yourself the simplest of cameras. Take a shoe box and make a hole in it. Light outside is drawn in through the hole and the image is projected on the other side. You could even place a mirror where the image is projected, cut out a rectangle on top of the box with wax paper over it and make your own screen if you wanted to. This again was already known in the ancient times, where it was seen in caves with narrow entrances, for example. With a little skill and a whole lot of hanging fabric, an entire room could be turned into a projection room, like they did in the courts of ancient China, or what some photo artists still use, such as El Bilardo Morbel, for their performances. Camera means simply small room, and the pinhole camera I explained earlier is called a camera obscura, which means something like a dark small room. Aristotle and Pythagoras described the camera obscura over 250 years ago, and their observations on the camera, contrary to other forms of ancient knowledge, have been with us since. But the copying of the picture still had to be done by hand. And so it was, the camera obscura first came into use as a drawing aid for those who were detail-oriented and not the best of freehand artists. Photography becomes photography when we can keep the images as well. Here is where inorganic chemistry came in to help. A man by the name of Albertus Magnus discovered silver nitrate and silver oxide as a way of etching away warts and then the development made by Georgios Fabricius in the 16th century were what led to big breakthroughs. Both of these liquids turned black when exposed to light. By 1800, someone finally tried for the first time to use this photochemical effect to create an image. Thomas Wedgwood put a cloth soaked in silver nitrate paper on his camera obscura. Unfortunately, the picture came out very pale and turned completely black soon after. Light was needed to see the photo, and light was what turned the photo black. But hey, this was the beginning. So in 1816, Nisiphono Nips produced a clearly recognizable picture with silver chloride. But soon the paper turned completely dark as well. Without some fixing agent, the photograph would have remained at best a carnival attraction. And only 23 years later, six years after Nips' death, in came Louis Daguerre, who finally did it. He developed through years of trial and error a complicated process that changed the pale transient image of former pictures into an image fixed permanently onto the page. The next few decades would bring about many improvements and refinements to the process by a plethora of tinkerers and inventors. Now although photography had now become possible, it wasn't that practical until George Eastman in 1884 in New York introduced the photographic film. No longer must every photographer be a chemist. Put in the film, finished. Please make way for the miniature camera, the amateur photographer, and the frantic reporter. By the beginning of the 20th century, where moving pictures were already invented, more people began to play with the new technology. First, photography emerged as an ultimate, incorruptible form of portraiture. What is burnt into the paper through the lens is reality. Period. But reality is boring, and photographers like Heinrich Kuhn worked to illustrate reality as he wished it to be seen. Thus, through his painstaking work, the first lenses with adjustable blur functions came about. Then there was a lot of work to get the picture in the first cameras to maintain a uniform sharpness throughout the entire image. A camera lens must be able to transmit light without separating it into its constituent colors. 
The first of these lenses were developed for medicine by William Hyde Wollaston at the beginning of the 19th century. The lens was further developed with the Degas apparatus in 1839, providing a new standard. And then the early parts of the 20th century came the Instagram effect, long before Instagram, which was an effect of deliberate blurring and distortion. In general, art. As the new technology and its users took the place of many of the old portrait painters and engravers, many artists focus now on painting what, instead of can be seen, can be felt. One of the first big scandals of art history was also a crossover project. Marcel Duchamp's nude descending a staircase number two caused quite the sensation with its influence of graphic motion studies and its imperceptible nude that caused its censor. But a market had already been established for nudes long before the first camera arrived. By 1845, nude photographs in Paris abounded, thought then to be used for the purpose of study for aspiring painters. Today we might find these studies pretty tame, but since they come from these hands of famous artists like Eugene Delacroix, they have become priceless. So back to photography. What's missing? Color. Color came a little later. The first color photograph came around 1861. Now, Thomas Sutton combined three pictures he had made with red, green, and blue filters to a single photo. Just like the progress of the black and white photograph, the addition of color gradually improved. Again, it was Eastman's company that introduced the first color film on the market and was targeted for the masses. This happened in 1935. Color remained for many years much more expensive than black and white film, which is why color only came to amateur photographers in the 50s. The principles of Kodochrome, as the color film was called, is still also used in the modern films as well. But with the advent of digital technology, the use of chemistry for developing pictures has become outdated. But the age-old camera itself and the lens that is used stay about the same. Already by 1957, little chips could be made that react to light and produce storable data. However, the first generation of chips produced only images with a resolution of 176 by 176 pixels. It would take a few more decades in order for us to be able to shoot whatever came across our path in high definition. Today, analog film has long become a thing of the past, and yet lives on in the hearts of pure photo enthusiasts. So yeah, what do you think out there? Do you take a lot of pictures with your many different cameras? Do you feel like the old style cameras are much better than the new digital ones? Write it down. And click here for the very exciting history of the telephone. Well, see you next time. Bye-bye.